Hey guys, I'm Colin with Evanex, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to replace a water pump in a Tesla Model 3. Yes, Teslas have a water pump. In a Tesla, the water pump circulates coolant to cool the electric motors, battery, power electronics, and also functions as part of the heat pump to manage cabin and battery temperatures efficiently. If your Tesla is experiencing coolant leaks, overheat warnings, abnormal noises, low coolant warning light, heater malfunctions, or no cabin heat, it could be time to replace your water pump. Today we're going to be installing a Pureberg water pump. Pureberg originally started off by producing carburetors and went on to become specialists in intelligent water pump technology, such as water pumps, oil pumps, vacuum pumps, and fuel pumps. Pureberg produces more than 15 million water pumps per year for all well-known European, domestic, and Asian car manufacturers. These three items from Pureberg can be used to replace all coolant pumps in Tesla vehicles model S, 3, X, and Y. This specific Tesla Model 3 has what's known as the Super Bottle. Basically, it's a big coolant reservoir that has one coolant pump on each side. Uh, we're just going to be replacing the one coolant pump today because the procedure is the same side to side. The list of tools for this job is very simple. All you need is a quarter inch ratchet, a short extension, a T20 for the water pump, and a 10 mil to remove the luggage compartment. In our case, we also have the Evanex skid plate, so we have a 15 mil and a four mil Allen. So the first step in removing the coolant pump in the Tesla Model 3 is going to be putting it into service mode. So that's really easy in these cars. First, we're gonna roll down the driver front window all the way. Now, once we've rolled down the driver window, we're gonna find the Tesla icon in the bottom left corner of the screen. We're gonna tap that. We're going to go to software and right over where it says Model 3 long range dual motor, we're going to tap and hold. There we go. Now it's going to initiate our service gateway once we put in a password. It's super secret. It's just the word service. Enter. Don't mess up is basically what that says. Now we're in service mode. Now that we've put the vehicle in service mode, we're going to activate gateway mode. So all we have to do for this is press down the brake pedal and hold the right turn signal for 10 seconds. It'll notify you on the screen, gateway unlocking. Now the process is complete, it'll say gateway unlocked. It'll stay in this mode for 90 minutes uh, and that'll be your work time for this install. If you need to extend it longer than 90 minutes, you could just reactivate the gateway like we showed you. Now we're going to navigate to thermal, coolant system. Here it'll show you all the functions and readouts for your entire cooling system. We're going to start coolant fill drain, and we're going to hit run. Okay. Now we should be able to disconnect the, fuel, the coolant pump. For the duration of this procedure, to keep the gateway unlocked, do not shut the door, press the accelerator, or the brake pedal. This will keep the gateway unlocked for us to do our service. If it's easier for you, you can put a rag in the hinge and it'll keep the door from shutting during this procedure. So the first step of this install is going to be to remove this cabin air filter cover. This is really easy. It just pops off with a couple clips. Now we're gonna remove the fresh air duct from the car. This pulls off with these four tabs. Now that we've removed those pieces, we're gonna remove the front storage area. It's just a couple 10 mil bolts, super easy. Now that we have our vehicle gateway activated, we can disconnect our 12 volt power supply. Make sure when disconnecting the 12 volt power supply to follow Tesla's provided procedure on this process. Now that we're underneath the car, we're gonna remove our splash shield. So we actually have our Evanex skid plate on this car. So the hardware will be a little bit different, 
but uh, we got to remove this so we can drain the coolant. A lift isn't necessary for this procedure. You can definitely do this in your driveway, but we have access to it, so we're going to use that. Next, unplug the harness from the pump. Get the connector out of the way. Now we can remove our four bolts. These four bolts are a T20 fastener, so we can go ahead and remove those. Now we're going to install our new O-rings under our water pump. These are really simple. Just put them in the location that they are on this pump and we should be good. Now to lubricate our O-rings, we're going to use some silicone lubricant. This just ensures that we don't uh, nick or put a tear in an O-ring when we're installing this because a leak in that area would not be fun. You'd have to redo the whole install. Now we're going to install our new coolant pump. Uh, it is important to make sure that this goes in the same way that it came out. So if you'll see here, there's a little tab for this connector. That was going to be facing the firewall. That is because there's a coolant passage here that needs to be in the correct spot in the reservoir for the coolant to flow properly. When you go to install this, you should be able to hear an audible click of the O-ring seating, like so. And then we will start to thread one of our new bolts in just to keep it in place. Now, once we install our new bolts, we're gonna do it in a crisscross pattern. And the torque spec for this is 1.8 Newton meters. It's really low, because these are threading in the plastic, so you don't wanna to over torque them. Now that our Pureberg coolant pump is installed, we can fill our coolant reservoir. We're just gonna to top it off with this Tesla approved coolant. Um, if you lose a little bit more coolant than we did during our procedure, then you can follow the Tesla documentation that shows how to properly bleed the system using the car's interface. So if you guys don't know, a little tech tip, this here can help you open the lid on these. So just go around like that, open up the container, super easy. Now that we've installed our new Pureberg coolant pump, we're going to reconnect the 12 volt battery supply. Now that we've reconnected our 12 volt power supply, we're going to go back into the gateway. So we can check here and see that our timer has not run out yet. So that means our gateway is still unlocked. So we can go to thermal coolant system and we're going to stop coolant fill drain. Okay, seems fine. Now that we've ended our start coolant fill drain procedure, we can tap coolant purge start. It's gonna show you some information. Basically it says it will run coolant air purge until it has been completed or requested to stop. So we're gonna run it. it. Says it will take up to 10 minutes. So just wait for the procedure to run its course. Now that 10 minutes has passed, it says to stop, rerun the routine with stop as the input. So we will hit rerun and the controller will continue to run coolant air purge until it has been completed, completed or requested to stop. So I'm assuming stop is close here because there's no other option to stop. So we'll hit close and uh, we should be good to put our car back together and drive it. As you saw, that was a pretty straightforward install. Uh, the link to the product is gonna be in the description below. Uh, remember to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell notification for more EV content. Thanks guys.